Hello and welcome to the Hi. Super Chat Catch-Up for Prey, or more accurately, EFAP 198, which was, you know, just yesterday, I'm sure. When this finally comes out, it'll be that long, but it was totally fine. 100%, we're finally having a little look back. I think we did some of these actually live. I can't even remember anymore. But hopefully, our memory will be fresh enough to talk about some of the things that may be brought up relating to Prey. Very Flash. possibly. Predator. Who knows? Either way, we're going to get started. The first one is today's rags of the day. Rags. Hi, rags. Good doggo. Oh, hi. Well, that seems like a solid rags of the day, doesn't it? I think that's a good start. Be curious what the next one is. Um, do yous reckon you'll cover Boys Season 3? No. No. <laughs> I don't no, even know if this was no, before no. or after it came out, actually. Where, where does Prey sit in that timeline? But um, uh, the boys season two absolutely annihilated any of our interest in the boys. Yeah, I just do not care at it was all. So bad, and it's funny because the first season that, no was full of that. potential. It's not like it was a great thing. No, it wasn't. Yeah. great. maybe that's probably like a thing that's worth yeah stating. It seems like they're yeah, it, it was it was all right, but then season two, oof. yeah, everything. Uh, Longman, I'm doing a remake of Kong for a school project. Can you say this line for my movie, please? Oh, I'm sorry. This is probably too late now. Oh, my bad. <laughs> but, uh, it's, um, well, I, I guess you'll be in the form of an announcer. Be... Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Carl Denham presents Kong, which he then says, the eighth wonder of the will. But that's not in the quote, so I guess that's all they wanted. If that's still of use to you, awesome. If not, I'm sorry it took so long. Also, hi, Fringy. Hey. Let me get this straight. I'm listening to someone I wouldn't exactly call short. I'm seeing freaking long men, and oh, yeah, they're talking to a dog. Yeah, it all lines up to yes. me. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's all right. You got it. You nailed it. About checks out, I think. Uh, this movie presents the French as irredeemably evil and stupid. 10 out of 10, high metal. <laughs> um, they weren't exactly very detailed as a group of people. And yeah, they were mostly they'd just get killed by the Predator in that sequence. Um, and then there was like one French dude that was kind of okay. Kind of. Kind of indeed. Um, Muller, have you seen the Matthew Matosis God of War video? I think a lot of his problems come from a lack of mastery. Also, are you still doing a critique? Uh -huh. Um, I think that he made several strong points in that video. I don't think that he failed to understand or grasp the mechanics of that game at all. Yeah, he, I mean, if he, as far as I'm concerned, went into more, like, substantive depth of the problems of that era of God of War than most, if not every video I've seen. Um, more so than any video I've seen, yeah. What you'll get with someone like Synthetic Man is that he's aware that people criticize... The mechanics he doesn't know why really he's just like these are maybe boring well, but i find them fun so they it's like analyzing mechanics can be quite tricky is is the thing yeah i love the it way be, mathematosis uh, does it and i don't agree with everything he says but i love the way he gets there he'll be like uh well yeah yeah it's it's a it's a matter of like his workings are so great like that that it's always interesting to hear what he has to say uh regardless of whether you end up agreeing or disagreeing with it at the end yeah, like, the the fact that he even noticed it is good enough, right? But, like, when you go to hit something or when something goes to hit you, uh, the, the game will work in its code that, like, that's either going to hit or not. And if it's going to hit, that means it can still be counted by a block or a roll, depending on what kind of move it is. Um, but then what does it, do? you know, is like sometimes it can be a close line between whether or not it will hit you. And I think Dark Souls is the kind of game that's just, like, it's just a literal uh, matter of range in terms of units, whether or not it'll hit you. In God of War, if you're like one inch away in terms of models, they might drag your model slightly toward it to connect the two, and then the animations don't look as, as shit. That's a strategy in terms of you know how to present your game, but as he highlights, it's like, well, that can be very um, misleading for a player if they're really considering this spacing. But the, you, know, you could even dig in further than that, talking about it. And that's the kind of shit where I'm just like, yeah, that's actually interesting, and it means that you've paid attention to how everything works, as opposed to, I think the mechanics are okay. Alright. 
That's nice. And it's crazy because Matthew and Joseph's videos aren't even like that long, or at least the, the God of War one isn't that long. He's, his videos are, yeah, often uh, quite succinct. Why we like him and approve of him. And to be honest oh, yeah. with you, I'm more than happy for him to cover things he cares about, but I kind of want him as a mainstream voice. This is why I almost want him to cover mainstream things. Well, it's, it's, I, but I, the thing is, is it's, it's funny you say that because I never would have found out about Ghost Trick if it wasn't for his video on it. That was a game I'd never heard of, even though I was familiar and had played some of the Phoenix Wright games. And I was like, man, that, that like recommendation just exposed me to this game that was really neat that I otherwise wouldn't have been exposed to. It's kind of the reason why I'm okay with him basically doing whatever he wants. Yeah, like I said, that, that trumps everything, basically. Do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. uh, today's animal of the day is the Puff Adder. Any of you guys familiar? I think I've heard of that, but let me... Let oh me, yeah, these guys... Oh, kind of regular like to me, and let some. Is that I guess he's a bit of a are... chunky. He's a bit, They're... a bit chunky. Very venomous. Oh. Why? Uh, what did they? What did are... anyone do to them? Well, got bitten. They got bit. Probably they were just walking around, and the snake was like, "Wow, the, you're getting too close. I'm a bite you." The snakes. Um. These do bite for food though, as well, right? They might be like, "Whoa, look at that huge happy meal." Not you know humans. What? I don't think that, yeah. <laughs> do they ever? No, do they ever eat any no. part of a human? No, I well, don't think they anacondas eat humans at all. Sometimes anacondas can like, or boa constrictors, right? Or or, my, or or is that just because snakes on a plane had that guy getting eaten? What if <laughs> I think that? Could you feed a human, as in like chop up pieces and give them to a snake? Would they eat that? Uh, I, I don't know. Maybe, I maybe at that idea. point the snake doesn't care. But generally, when snakes see people. People are much, much bigger, and any any human could kill a snake in an actual fight. So, well, the I mean, snake's that's like not the case with a lot of animals. It's just that, like, I mean, you can kill a spider. It's just you don't want to get bit because that might really hurt, or depending on the spider, it could be seriously dangerous. Yeah, you want to, I guess, grab it by just under the head and the end of the tail. I guess is that the idea? I think the end. Of tail is really bad because snakes are really good at uh contorting themselves to like grab onto you if you do that i think i think you just want to you want to grab it by the tail and swing it around so that it can't oh can't yeah if you, swung, if you swung it around really fast i guess it wouldn't be able to get you and but, then you throw it into real the quick. sky I mean, have it you ever seen away. a video of a, a snake fighting a mongoose some of those uh, snakes or those cobras are real fast what it, what well, an unlikely like i said like, though pairing, you know? one hand Beneath the head, one hand at the end of the tail. Oh, I, I know I that's what you want to do. You want to hold it right behind yeah. the head. Yeah, I guess people so like use like a too. stick or something to kind of, kind of pin yeah, it down yeah. behind the head, yeah. and that's where they grab it. You know well, what? Like the, uh, I'd be curious to know what the uh, older visions of snakes are it's further back in time. Like you know, like their ancestry, hardcore oh, revolution. Right. Yeah. Where do they... I'm sure that information's out there. Yeah, where, where do they start to have, like, family trees that line up with some other animals that went different ways, you know? Uh, interesting, lads. They, they're kind of like, if, if there were no such thing as animals in general, and then everyone was designing some, and you're like, look at this guy. He's like a, like a line, but squiggly. He's like a noodle, but he also has, like, yeah, harsh is... venom, and he can go, and you're just like, oh, this wow, that's interesting. Good variety. Imagine you were like, so like a worm, but really big, and it's like, this is a bit, this is a scary worm. It's like a, this is a danger worm. Mm hmm Well, danger noodle is what a lot of people say snakes are, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Danger noodle. Um, this movie presents, oh wait, I did read that, yeah. Uh, and yeah, as for whether or not I would do a critique of God of War, I'd like to someday, but no guarantees on when whatever may or may not show up, you know? The, the approach these things. Uh, please read the Pokedex entries for Mega Skizor. Well, um, Mega, Mega, Mega. I'll just read the next one while you are. Uh, I always read that as Sizer. Oh, it could be. Yeah, I don't know. Is it Caesar? I have no clue. Because I remember he I've says it in. I've never heard it aloud. So he says it in Melee. I think he says Caesar. Well, that could be a different Pokemon altogether. To be honest with you. Fun fact, Plague Doctors kept sweet-smelling perfumes and aromas in their masks. Pretty, right. what you're sniffing in there, you goo? 
That's they do. That's right. They they had like herbs and stuff because they thought that that would help them. I'm not sure that it did though. Well, they were asking what you got in yours. Uh, I don't have anything in it right now. Um, you know, sometimes you want to just get some uh, just fresh air. You know, you ever put like chocolate in there just for the smell? Uh, what like a like what type of chocolate? Well, I guess you, you wouldn't of? you wouldn't get like a piece of chocolate or anything. You just get something that's like meant to smell like chocolate, or, like designed yeah, exactly. for that instead. So. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, you could so many options, right? You can do all kinds of things. That's right. Um, let's see. So, Mega Sizor, whatever it's, however it's pronounced, I've never actually heard it said aloud. Um, the Pokédex entries. Uh, bah, bah, bah. It's better at beating things than grasping them. When it battles for a long time, the weight of its pincers become too much to bear. Um, oh, due to the effects of Mega Evolution, its pincers have taken on a more diabolical form, ripping anything they pinch to shreds. Oh. Oh my goodness. Lonely. And we have ten-year-olds fight with these things? Alright. Sometimes they're not even that old. They're dangerous. Hi, Fringy. Kick rags. No molar. Long metal. Oh, hey. Oh. Alrighty. All right. I don't believe that Naru was able to yank down something as strong enough to overhead press a bear. She also got her family killed due to her narcissism and is just generally unlivable. Just genuinely unlikable, I think is what they mean. Her brother yeah. equals Chad. Yeah, I definitely came around on the whole, like, her brother was the yeah, best Tabe character. The brother she was kind of lame, actually. The best. Yeah, she was very lame. The more I watched it, Significant, uh, significant downgrade in my opinion on her on the rewatch. Lame protagonist. Should have just been about other people. Or just, yeah, completely redo the arc you're going for with her. It's a little, uh, honestly a little bit lame. She seems to learn in the end that, yeah, everyone died for me to kill this thing, which is awesome. <laughs> it's like, hmm, okay. Um... Off topic, bleh, off topic, but I watched all of I Am Groot today, and surprisingly, in the 15 minutes of content, the writing was bad, and in episodes 3 and 5, the animation is bad. Hi, Rags. Oh, hi. Gosh, that was the one that I had my sh my, <laughs> my fucking hopes up for. Um, yeah, I just never really had any intention of watching that one, so... Um, Lord Longbong of Mewblington Abbey. I recently watched Peter Jackson's Long Kong. It was all right. Definitely a movie fat for the ages. Huh. Hmm. Well, perhaps someday. Yeah, the request has uh, it's been made once or twice for us to cover that. Anybody seen Mr. In Between? Great Australian show, a true passion project by its creator who wrote and starred in every episode. I haven't seen it, but I think I may have heard of it. Um, yeah, I don't know anything about it. Well, yeah, that's all I got to, so. Uh, classic Yu-Gi-Oh card of the day is Toadmaster. Toadmaster. Right. What, is, what is Toadmaster? What is that? Toadmaster. I remember this one. Yeah. I remember old Toadmaster. Yeah. A hermit frog that has been in existence for thousands of years. It attacks with tadpoles. <laughs> Look at his face. He's so, he's so mischievous. He's a little frog stick, too. Dang. Yeah. If you attack with tadpoles, that's 1,000 attack. There's probably it's some other critters that have, like, blades and knives and swords, and they have, like, 800 attack, 700. It's no match for tadpoles as a weapon. I suppose if they're, like... Partially, they're floating around. I wonder if they can like float through you and into you, and then just go straight for your heart or something. Just fuck with it. Do some real damage. He is a toad master, after all. Toad master. Anybody seen? Oh wait, sorry. Uh, ranking annual twenty-four hour streams: two, then one, then three. Very well. I'm not surprised that one hundred will forever be the most popular with that. An olden wolf bot. 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 <laughs> there, there, there. Um, Amber Mid Thunder plays a mutant named Carrie Loudermilk in Legion. She shares a body with her bro, Carrie Loudermilk. She mostly lives 
inside of his body and only ages when she's outside of it. Watch Legion. Sounds very strange. That sounds strange. Um, yeah, I've heard Legion be recommended before. Hey, Evap, after almost four years of this show, have passions changed at all for you guys? I've been thinking about streaming and making videos as a hobby, and I'm curious how long I can stay invested in my own work. Thanks. Um, my I'm passion a significant way. for talking will never go away, I don't think. Just... And don't we know it. And that's, uh, combined with, I like talking to people. Other humans. Imagine that's one of them, uh, built-in things as well. What are the passions we're talking about? Like, our passion for maybe checking out new media. Storytelling is like a drug to me. And there's still good stuff here and there. And there's plenty of old good stuff I still haven't seen. Um, what else is there? Video making in general? I mean, that one is the big complicated one that a lot of people get burnt out on. Um, I'm still okay on that. Still editing, uh, fat minis and movies as well. So, yeah, all my passions are absolutely fine still, but I could understand you'd expect some level of waning or changing over four to five years. What about you guys? Um, I don't think really my passions have changed much. Um, uh... I'd have to think about it, but really, I mean, I'm, I'm into watching shows and movies. I'm definitely still into games. I, I do the same hobbies I typically do. Um, the, it's just the information I get maybe changes how I present it has changed the way that I, um, engage in those hobbies has, I think improved in that time, which is probably the most important part, but the hobbies themselves and my passions for them. No, I don't think those have changed. Uh, in terms, in terms of like, I guess, a desire to, you know, like, like create stuff and and do that. I, d I don't think anything has changed other than maybe like what the focus is on. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. If I've ever been like, you know what? I don't really feel like making stuff anymore. And you know, obviously, it's going to be different for everybody. So best of luck with whatever it is you get up to. Longest man, would you be willing to do a movie fap slash unbridled video of the Iron Giant? Uh, it's, it's a possibility that we could have some coverage of the Iron Giant at some point. It's a classic. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Mm. Also, on a scale of 1 to 10, how annoying is the misuse of brevity as a soul of wit quote to dismiss your videos? Uh, every once in a while. Mostly it's, uh, we get, instead of that, we get uh, people commenting on how the video is longer than the movie. Uh, that one's fairly common. Yeah. Um, sometimes we just get these, these just declarations of how long a video should be. Yeah. Thirty minutes. Real Forty odd. minutes, and they'll just yeah. say that's how long a video should be. Like they just, you just fucking made that just up no, and said it. No, well, yeah, just a failure to realize. Like, man, that seems like totally arbitrary. I've seen answers that range from five minutes to forty minutes, but then you'll randomly sometimes just get people who are like, "Well, one hour. One hour is the maximum." One hour is okay, it, except I, I doubt that the stand, like, I, I always find it odd that it's like, this standard applies to YouTube videos, but not like television or film or video games or like any other sort of medium of creativity. But yeah. I think it's because a lot of people don't perceive YouTube as being creative. And they'd be like, well, what are you talking about? Of course, I definitely, yeah, like, of course I see it as creative. It's like, I mean, yeah, you say that, but like, it doesn't seem to, it, you just don't seem to grant it the same level of, I guess, courtesy by way of people's ambitions. These are the same people who would refuse to ever allow any of the three of us to be called artists anyway. Oh, well, I mean, that's really awkward. <laughs> like, no, I've always I, found I it funny because I'm more than fine calling anyone an artist, really. It's not really that much well, I mean, of a deal. If you're creating stuff, you're an artist. Whether or not you, it's good or bad is like irrelevant. But, you know, they're like, no, what you do is gross. You ruin art. You kill art. You can't be calling that art. Uh, What deck of shadow on EFAP? Nice. Now I think you just need to get undoomed. Altiori. Also, Decker, congrats. You're the only reviewer from the Channel Awesome days that I still watch consistently. Was he a part of Channel Awesome? I don't remember that. He was probably around in that era, I guess. That could make sense. Because there are still a couple here and there doing their thing. But... Well, I guess Nostalgia Critic is still around, isn't he? Still doing his thing. Um, but yeah, uh, Decker was real cool. Well, you know what? Uh, there's a good chance we'll we'll eventually cover the Leprechaun movies, and I think he reviewed them, so maybe we'll have him back for that. 
That just sounds I like a funny him, thing. Yeah. Monstrous Leprechaun Man, played by Warwick Davis, and it's just like a horror movie. That just sounds so funny. Oh, well, he's an incredible actor, so yes. I'm curious to see how he uh, does that. What I've heard is that he... <laughs> what is it called? Leprechaun in the Hood? That's one of the, that's one of the movies. <laughs> is he, like... Did they do one for space? They should have if they didn't. Space. You're riding in a dark train when a creepy voice says, Brothers and sisters, have I none? But Batman's father is my father's son. Who is speaking? Say that one more time. Brothers and sisters, have I Brothers none? But yeah. Batman's father is my father's son. Who is speaking? Batman's, Batman's father is my father's son. That would be Batman's so father then, be... right? Batman's father, which is yeah. B-Dad, is this guy's father's son. So he could be... Yeah, I guess he's either Batman's him. dad or Batman's dad's and brother. I guess something like that. But, I'm not um, good with these kind of word thingies. Or he's just the Riddler. Or, or he's just <laughs> he's seeing all this shit. Maybe that's the yeah. Maybe that's the trick. Um, have any of you seen the new trailer for Alone in the Dark? No, no, I have not. They're doing a a remake, right? That was a that's like an older game and. Well, is the, the lad from the Soma connected to that, right? Or is that someone else? Uh, I, that sounds like something you told me, yeah. Yes, that's what my understanding is. Why well, I think we are like, hmm. 2023 is the year of, uh... 2023 is the year of, like, the resurgence of, um... Of, uh, horror games. Like, mainstream, big-budget horror games. Cool. Yeah. I'm with Rags on the 6 out of 10 above average rating. Strong recommend on the Comanche dub. The lip sync is decent and it adds a lot to the immersion. Um, I imagine it does. I didn't even know that was a thing until later. I think, I think I found out from YMS's video. Oh, it's, what? That they had a, the dub? I can't remember if we had the chance to watch it in the dub and we chose not to. or the cause it, Yeah, because that's the native language is English, isn't it? As into the film. No. It was it was <clears throat> it was shot in English. Yeah. I think that they had originally considered doing it all in Comanche, but then they realized that they probably would make less money if they did that. My rule tends to be to go with whatever they shot in. Yeah, because yeah, if they had done it in, if they had shot the whole film in, uh, which I would have, I think that would have been cool. Uh, if the whole film was shot like, and so there would have been nobody yeah. speaking English. It would have just been Comanche in French. That would have been cool. But I think that that was them realizing that the market kind of doesn't allow that to like well the film is going to have enough trouble stuff. as is uh yes because for some reason subtitles are a barrier of entry a barrier oh, of dude, entry rather uh, randomly catch rants from different people that i enjoy the content of where they're like i hate subtitles it's like stop it i just i don't know stop what i meant it. to do with that. if you look at it subtitles then you're gonna miss stuff no you're not you, people miss stuff all the time anyway, as if subtitles, this like, I mean, we've brief seen, we've second. Seen watch films in English, and they speak <laughs> English, they miss so much. Exactly. Uh, what about To Catch a Predator? Well, there's got to be mashups of that all over the place with an actual predator, I think. I say actual as if you guys know I'm referring to the alien as opposed the to... Alien predator as opposed to the, <laughs> the ones that actually exist in reality. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, this will be confusing. The Flash will be the best Predator movie. Fuck, the Flash movie still isn't out, yeah. That's coming out pretty soon, Flash so the... that's, uh, that's June, I think. Dude, so the amount of eyes good. that'll be on that for the predator critical movie. people, like, in terms of just, what the fuck was this movie? Uh, well, especially if it's going to be, what, multiverse and all that crazy, like, time travel, different... But, I mean, what is it all leading to now? <laughs> you know, like, it's... They're doing it, and then to, to what end? <coughs> What's funny to me as well? That one, I would apply to that. The other films don't strike me as that they would be, like, their own individual things, but The Flash always felt like it was meant to be setting something up. It's just, it would be so funny well, if it just had a runaway success and, like, made well, fucking three billion dollars or some it, shit, and they're just like, it what? Keeps getting talked about. It keeps getting talked about, like, articles that Warner Brothers really, really like that film. 
apparently like a lot of the executives really really like it it keeps popping up in articles where they're like they think they've got like a dark knight in their hands in terms of like a massive <laughs> success and critical success and it's right. so fascinating right. you see people talking about the film on twitter it's just like dude like <laughs> like dude uh, I guess it's just, you know, it's always going to be, and especially the whole casting thing, right? Henry Cavill is out, but Ezra Miller stays. If that, if that would actually happen, it would just be, like, baffling. People would be yeah. upset. People are upset. People right. are already upset that he's gone. If, if they start choosing, picking and choosing who gets to stay and who leaves, I think that'll uh, upset people even more. What's funny is I think that if he came out with like a 40k adaptation, Henry, that's like amazing. I think a lot of people might come around to like, you know what? Fuck it. Maybe it he's like better off guy. leaving. Yeah. And, and at that point, you'll get to be said like, oh, you know what? It's their fucking loss. Who needs them? Mm. Well, unless I guess the films make a lot of money. The, the, the DC films. I saw a promotion today as well for uh, Snyder's upcoming movie. Yeah, yeah, Rebel Moon, right? Yeah, everyone's gonna be getting excited and totally gonna talk about that for about a day. Yeah, uh, uh, even wow, the optimistic. I know this is the thing. I just I can't imagine people will continue to talk about whatever that's gonna be. I, isn't it so fascinating that he like garnered a cult of personality, but just for his DC films, not for like anything else that he's making. Yeah, and, and to Is be that... fair, that component was required, but so was he for that particular fandom. It needs to be Snyder and DC. I don't know what that is, but yeah. Which is so what, weird when, like, his films are not even, like, remotely faithful to the source material. And they're, like, they're mean-spirited a lot of the time, and fucking weird. They're very cynical Fans films. of the films. Take them both. Take them both. Uh, ever played a game... That was, for lack of better words, carried by its charm. Carried by, carried its, by charm. its charm. A game that was carried by its charm. Maybe Naughty Bear. You guys ever play that? No. Relatively simplistic mechanics uh, and like low scope, but you are literally a teddy bear and you have to get the most score by killing other teddy bears in different ways. Right. Yeah, that, that sounds like the game that I'd heard of. Yeah, it's... It's super silly, yeah. and I think you can get like lose interest pretty quickly. But when you're just like it's all cuddly and different, like throwing a teddy bear into like a wood chipper and seeing all the fluff everywhere, or something like that, is yeah, this is the charm there. Yeah, you're like, I, hey. I, uh, I find Fall Guys charming, but evidently not charming enough to play it for a very long time. Mm. I like the little characters. I like them. They're they're just like little fellas running around in this in this uh, game show. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I... evidently, that didn't work with Among Us. I barely played that. Never got into Among Us, never cared for it. Played it once, um, I think. That one time on EFAB, actually. Yeah. Uh, there's, a, there's a little little indie game I played called Resistance is Frutile. And you had to shoot, it's like a top-down kind of shooter sort of thing. A little pixel style, and you shoot the fruit. Mm -hmm. And I was, I was like, oh... When you said fruitile, and I was like, maybe that's the gimmick. That it, that's the gimmick. You you shoot fruit, and the fruit are different attacks, and it's a fine. It's fine as a game. You know, nothing special, yeah. nothing to write home about. But it was a charming little game. You know, a little tiny indie studio. I don't know if like one or two people made it, something like that. It was a fun little game. That's the one that comes to mind. Mm -hmm. uh, there might be others, but generally, um, it's hard to have charm carry a game that I have to play. See, it's funny. Now I'm thinking about charm probably in, like, the most uh, colloquial sense, but if I thought about a lot of the, 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 the... Well, I was about to say a lot, but it's actually not that many. The Telltale games that I liked, it's like The Wolf Among Us, I really like. It has, like, barely any mechanics at all, but I really like the story. And so I was like, is that the charm carrying it? It's like, I feel like that goes beyond charm. That goes to, like, something that's pretty substantial as, like, a, an element of that game, you know? So, I'm not sure. Usually I need mechanics that I find interesting, um, else it needs to be, like, super interesting narratively. Uh, also, Muller, are you longer slash taller than Ben 10's Way Big? I have not seen Ben 10 before, so I don't know. I don't know. Anything about Ben 10? Is he 10? Like, you never watched the... He was, but then he wasn't, like, for a while, actually. They did several uh. seasons where he was a teenager. There was like Ben, ben 10 13. Alien Force, 
I think, and then, Ben and team, then there were a yeah. couple more. And that was, uh, I think, uh, Ellie, Ashley Johnson was uh, in that show. I think she played his cousin. That show was kind of, I don't remember anything about it, but I, I remember finding, like, the uh, the Alien Force one, like, when he started, like, sort of becoming more independent and going on adventures with, like, that team. That I, I remember enjoying that one more. Never really was that interested in the original series. Mm. But again, I couldn't tell you anything about <laughs> it. Like, <laughs> or I don't even remember the names of any of the aliens in it. Um, I just remember that there was, like, an alien with, like, four arms. He was, like, a Machamp, but orange, I think. Hmm. There was like a, there was a, there was like a, a, a big bull guy, like kind of like, like a big alien kind of armadillo, but except he, I, wasn't it? Yeah. This is what I mean. No, yeah. Those, those references are just like thin. <laughs> I think they rebooted that one too. Cause they've rebooted a lot of, uh, a lot of cartoon networks, like older stuff. Cause they, I guess it's like the inevitable Dexter's lab, whenever that happens scary times those will be yeah uh hi deck i've been watching your vids since 2017 thumbs up i uh i first bumped into him as a result of the uh predator movie right the the predator Ugh. quite a thing <laughs> um please watch dancing ninja ryan from high school musical goes up against hasselhoff a wild trip and the most 2000s film i've ever seen please I've never heard of Who's that. Who's Ryan from High School Musical? That wasn't Zac Efron, was it? Was it the other guy? That was. Zac Efron it was, was in it. Oh, okay, so he was. So I, I, I just figured that if they said Ryan from High School Musical, I thought people knew who like Zac Efron was. <laughs> I didn't know that that was like. Oh, you're right. Yeah, for uh, for a second there, I was like, it's perfectly normal to refer to a character, and I was like, wait, nobody would ever refer to the characters of High School Musical. Character. Troy. No, he, was it Troy? Like, oh, was, was he that his boss? Wait, so Ryan who was Ryan died. then? So was Ryan was Ryan high the like Zach Efron? Zach Efron was Troy. So who's Ryan? Oh, I Ryan have to know. Well, Ryan, I, I'm a, Ryan was uh, he like was played by Lucas Grabeel. He was oh. the Corbin Blue was Chad. Uh, <laughs> Van Vanessa Hudgens was Gabriella. Mm. Ashley Tisdale was Sharpay. I know mm. that. Yeah, I, that because that name is just like. That's a that's an interesting name. Uh, I I keep the, when when someone says Sharpay, I think of the markers. That's all I think yeah. about is the markers. Uh, oh, I thought they were called Sharpies. Yeah. Uh, but you think okay? Yeah. All right. I'll give you that one. Sure. Oh yeah, yeah. They're pretty. They're pretty I'll close. Let, I'll let you have it. Let me pull out my. The confusion was the fact you didn't say they remind you of Sharpies. Sharpies. You know, you said the markers instead. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it would be Sharpay is the actual thing, right? Isn't that a I thing? gave you like just a... enough to put it together in your head. And I enjoyed it. I like the Riddler, but a yep. good Riddler. Riddle me this, Batman. What is Sharpay, but also who's Sharpie? Like, ah, yes. You just punch him and take the keys to whatever's <laughs> going on. <laughs> I need to disarm these fucking bobs, okay? <laughs> you remember the, uh, the South Park episode where they did High School Musical, except he wanted to play basketball instead of being part of a musical theater? Yeah, it's good shit. And then they learnt how to do musical theatre to impress, like, everybody at school. But because he'd moved on to basketball, like, they didn't give a shit. Because they were only interested in what he was doing because he was, like, the popular guy. <laughs> they didn't care that he was interested in singing. South Park was in my recommended today for the Safe Space song. And it's just like, it is unreal how... It's not just about how someone goes, oh, South Park, they, you know, they were ahead of their time with a lot of stuff. It's like, no, they've been ahead of their time for, like, two decades. Insane. Mm. The Safe Space I, episode, when did that even come out? That was, like... That would have come out, like, 2016 or something. Super early on. Yeah. And, uh, and people PC still Principal linking it to played. each other today. It's like, of course they are. The part when PC Principal just beats the shit out of Cartman. <laughs> <laughs> PC principal. I remember when he's introduced. I was like, "This is brilliant. I love uh, it." Oh yeah, that was uh, that was an interesting time for South Park. That was uh, that was like basically the era when they started to try doing serialized stories, but then they gave up when things started to like not go as they had planned. I'm pretty sure it's like basically all but confirmed that they thought Hillary Clinton was going to win, and so they had written everything with like uh, Mr. Yeah. Garrison, 
based on that and then when that changed it was like we have like it fucked one up day. everything <laughs> we have we have one day to figure out what our story is gonna be it's i guess it's kind of odd you think that they would have like planned for that contingency anyway i think just it, like, they well, just I mean, thought it was like guys, in right? the bag they just figured that was gonna happen and, and yeah. to be fair loads of people did and so you know you have uh i think the story reflects that sort of frantic nature right like the characters don't believe it they're just like what why what is happening what's going on because obviously mr garrison that seems... universe fucking horrible idiot candidate for sure well and it's kind of funny because it, it locks mr garrison out of a lot of stories yeah uh, i don't know what's changed now i think they did a joke where he just like comes back to south park and everybody's just like mad at him yeah it's just like oh yeah i'm back guys like i'm just back at south park or oh, that might have been one of the specials it seems like that's the new thing that they can use to do more long form stuff is to do the specials um gives them an opportunity to yeah like expand the 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 one where like Cartman sacrifices himself to like save the world and ends up homeless on the street. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> don't ever know what he sacrificed for them. Literally, he's the real Wanda. He sacrificed being like a good person, essentially, and having like a, a life that was worthwhile to save the world. Did. And the fact that the whole episode, Kyle's just like, no, you're, you're doing this to mess with me. <laughs> you're not actually, yeah. you're not actually like a good, you know. Good to see you got Decker on. I super chatted him before. Would he go on? And yeah, it was fun stuff. That will. They're going to make another Predator movie at some point. So I'll have him back for that, I, I assume. Yep. Yeah. Maybe Terminator too. Maybe Alien. Who knows? They're Are all they on a big wheel. Terminator? They're going to make one. Well, the, the latest I heard about that is that if they were going to make another one, they'd probably reboot, which is so funny. Uh, they what... probably have to at this point, right, if they wanted to do it, yeah. I mean, uh, Genesis was kind of a reboot, and then Dark Fate was, you know, half a reboot. And when I say that, I mean it yeah. rebooted half the franchise. Mm. So it kind of didn't make much money at all. Um... I'm just at the point of being like, oh yes, do we reboot? Do we make a sequel? Do we do a prequel? Do we it's like, how about you make a good movie? Can you figure that out? Yeah. Like, like for real. that's a I don't know, Mal. That's a big ask. What As was saying, I think about the whole um, what DC's going to do next, like all this different focus on right, yeah. the large storylines, and it's just like, just fucking grab a character and make a good movie. Let's just start there. Yeah, that'd be it. yeah, be a start. Um, is Poop Soup the code name for the new Marvel phase? Poop Soup. It should be. <laughs> That's about right, I'd say. Sent this one before, but never heard the answer. Love you guys, especially the good dog and rags. What's your opinion on Indiana, Indiana and Hoosiers? Hoosiers? I don't know what that is. Is the Hoosiers a band? Uh. Hoosiers. Look. It's a film from 1986 where Hugh Jackman, or sorry, Gene Hackman, sorry. Uh, Gene Hackman <laughs> is hired to direct a basketball program at a high school in a tiny Indiana town. I have not seen Hoosiers. And so yeah, I have no I. opinion um, on it. Uh, Gene Hackman. I've never, I think that's the first time in my whole life I've realized Gene Hackman and Hugh Jackman have the. Like, a the, similar... It's, yeah, it's like I'm yeah. fucking with my brain. <laughs> Gene Hackman and Hugh Jackman. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, they're both famous actors, so we'll never confuse them. <laughs> I want someone to be like, is, is Hugh Jackman Gene Hackman's son? Are he <laughs> He'd be related? like, why? <laughs> I don't know, it's close enough. Is this, I mean, I'm the same one as that name. brothers and like, sisters oh, I have yeah. none thing? <laughs> Uh, sent this once before. Oh wait, yeah, sorry. Well, yeah, uh, and the other one was just opinion on Indiana, the state. Like the I state of Indiana. Don't think, I don't think I've been there, so um, so low I, I just then. don't have any opinion. I'm, I'm sure they're, I'm sure they're fine, nice people, like many, uh, like many are. Rags, I don't slide. Tell that to ruined grandma. Oh, so many people found out about that. Long Daddy, can you do a 10-hour breakdown of Riley Reed's last movie before she retired? We really lost a legend. Owen oh, High Rags. Hello. Um, I have suspicions. I think that might be a porn star. Riley Reed? Yeah, my very limited knowledge is throwing up a red flag. Riley Reed. I spelled it wrong. 
Instagram photos and videos. It's a, there's an official website. Um, oh, Pornhub.com. Okay. Well, I don't have any. Well, oh, she wow, might be a that. porn person and an actor. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, truth about Riley Reed. What is the all truth this? about the truth about Riley Reed? The bio: American porn star Riley Reed was born in May of 1991 in Florida. She is. Wow, she is of Dutch, Irish, Welsh, German, Puerto Rican, and Dominican descent. That genealogical combination seems to have given her both incredible beauty and personality. At five foot four, this natural cutie is a petite three to a cup. Proof that you don't need giant tits to make it in the XXX industry. True. So, uh, right yeah, I she's very lovely. Probably She's not a... going to review her last porno. That's probably not going to happen on the channel, honestly. This is um, this is her. I'll cr I'll, I'll not include the part with the big dick on her face, but this is like the banner for her. I guess Pornhub, um, like porn star banner or whatever her channel essentially. I don't like that with the eye. It makes me think she's got a black eye or something, and I'm like, oh my god. What is it supposed to be? I guess she's look she's looking through something, but I don't know what. What is she looking through? The barrel of an extremely broad urethra? The barrel of urethra. I, you know what? I'm not even gonna speculate. Alrighty. Bro, I'm she's just, porn uh, star rank five. Rank five, she's okay. The, of all time. She's the, I, I don't know. That's oh, if I mouse over it, it changes. Uh, f porn star rank is five. Weekly rank is five. Monthly rank is five. Last month her rank was five, and her yearly rank is. Can you guess it? Is it five? It's four. Oh, I, I feel like it's probably all rigged. I guarantee all of them the same every time. Ridiculous. Maybe I have no clue. Like it, it's just a world that I don't know anything about. Not porn, but like specific porn star profiles rankings competitions like i'm sure people treat it very seriously what does it rank for like money in as industry is it like really low it's, compared to the others or i don't know i feel like it's really up there i feel like porn would be a pretty big deal well i guess maybe you and i might be thinking about it differently do you mean like the specific porn star part or maybe are you talking whatever is about encompassed potential... within industry stats like for the video game music movies TV I imagine shows. porn is pretty big. Well, the rest of them are pretty big, right? But like, porn. I understand has... sizes and everything, but still. The thing about movies, TV, and games is they can apply to all ages, Market right? For pretty much everyone. Yeah. I wonder if that is a big effect. No idea. I I do not know. Inter they have like all the the information on them, and it's like their star sign, cancer, birthplace, and profile views. Interested in. All that sort of stuff. I don't know. I I don't follow porn stars, you know. Nope. Um, now on to a startlingly different topic. The Pokemon of the day is apparently Yamask. I don't oh. like it. Yeah. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to make of this, really. I'm assuming, is that Mask at the Bottom part of him, or is that something he holds? I presume it's part of him. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. It's not yeah, much for me to do with that. I don't know. Eh. I am without commentary for that. Yeah, I just mm -hmm. don't... I don't like it. It's... I feel like without the mask, we might have the makings of something, almost like a dark jellyfish sort of thing that has sort of hands that float out on the side, but I just... No. Nah. Uh, caught up on EFAP up to 38. This is taking forever. Rags, I own an AR-15 and just picked up an M9 Beretta. Are you proud of me now, father? Um, am I proud of you? Um, that's a complex question. As long as you're being responsible with it, and you're using it for the right reasons, you're being a good, you know, citizen, and exercising your rights, then I, uh, I am proud of you. But if you're just going around plugging cats in the neighborhood, I'm not proud of you. That is a bad thing to do. Do not do it. 
I would buy the target panicking interpretation if she wasn't pretending to snore while her bro SAS telling his story. Oh, when they're shooting the arrows, I think. Target panic. Yeah, that's right. From the uh yeah, from the best to the worst target panic. That's right. I think that's what I'm about prey. No. Well, that referring to that's that's what I know it from. I know it from Target Panic, the guy the video of the archer. Target panic. And we can just... I've never had that with a gun. Maybe it's specific to archery, this phenomenon. Maybe. Because of the motions that are used in archery. Because I, I don't know anything about archery, really. I don't know if you're supposed to, like, look down the arrow or if you're supposed to keep your eye on the target and you just sort of develop the, the coordination. It's like when you throw a frisbee, right? When you throw a frisbee or a baseball or anything like that, you're not looking at the thing you're throwing. You're looking at what your target is, right? And the muscles... You, you, your hand, your coordination kicks in, and the better you are at that coordination, the more accurate you can be. So I wonder if archery is the same way, where you just sort of feel the position of your front and back hands and where the arrow is, but you look at your target. I'm not sure. I have no clue. I imagine you could still uh, just say that snoring was here overcompensating for having not been as good as him with archery, and that I think it could still work. I don't know if anyone's as good as Archery as Tabe. He's insanely good. He can shoot eagles out of the sky with his first try. With his hands tied behind his back. With his hands tied behind his back. He could shoot a he he can teach you how to shoot a bow, no strings attached. <laughs> Mutually, the American uh, military has developed a literal sword covered missile. Look it up. I actually have seen that before, yeah. It, like it's a way to try and prevent um I guess additional collateral damage because it just it just lands and propels a bunch of like big blades in those different directions. I think the blades. I I thought the blades are supposed to stay attached to the missile. It's just it just fucks up and slices anything it hits. So if you want to kill a very specific vehicle or like a person, you drop this missile that has the sword sticking out of it, and it just increases their deadliness. Yeah, that's my understanding of what the missile is, which is kind of funny but it makes sense we want to shoot a missile at something we don't want collateral damage so how do we tighten in its kill radius well let's just attach a bunch of swords to it <laughs> and so they did it sounds like a strictly american creation i'm Listen, glad it exists <laughs> it probably works really well i would imagine how do we upgrade a missile a sword missile <laughs> attach swords to it I'm curious, I wonder if the swords are, if, if they like double as stabilizing fins, if they just took the stabilizing fins and just sharpened the fronts and essentially turned them into swords. Hmm. I was watching it, there was a video of the, um, there was an old jet fighter that, after World War II, I think it was called the Starfighter jet, Starfighter jet. Yeah, the Lockheed F-104 Starfighter. And I was watching this, little, this old video on it where they were talking about it. And someone took a piece of paper and they like cut the piece of paper on the fronts of the wings because they were so sharp at the front. And I wonder how in, in, in the service of that, 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 uh, that's, that, that jet, how many bisected birds were eventually created from it, from all of them flying through the air? Many. People are just walking around, and all of a sudden, two halves of a bird just land in front of them. And they're like, oh, the starfighters are out again. I meant to bring this up, actually, but hey, just bring it up now. Why not? Um, this will be post-Velma. I don't know how far after it, but whatever. Uh, I did send a video, but uh, a lot of people are talking about it now. Um, I guess because the Velma show has given even more attention to it. But um, there's an interview where Mindy Kaling just says that as the head of her show... Uh, she has, uh, I think Conan O'Brien is trying to make a joke about how like, hey, being the head of a show, you got to be responsible. You can just make whatever you want happen. He even has a joke of being like, sometimes you can end up just putting your own name on your show. And then everyone just laughs and it's like, Haha, yeah, this is fun. And then she says, yeah, um, I had a scene with a guy who's like super hot and we were supposed to just be, uh, I think she said in a bed together, just just having a scene. That's, that's it. Nothing else is happening. Um, and he got a little bit close to it, and so she decided she just wanted to kiss him, and did so. And that wasn't in the script, oh. and the guy was, like, super awkward about it, and like, what the fuck just happened? Um, 
And then she was talked to by, I think she said, like a producer slash someone who has some power with the show. Like, what are you doing? You can get seriously in trouble for that. He could sue you. And then she said, don't tell anyone about it. Just don't. Don't fucking say anything. And, uh... Oh, and no, fuck, and, really? And, and, and yeah, Jeez. and, and she, she's laughing while explaining the story. And she says, like, you know, nothing happened. Got away with it. And then Conan O'Brien's like, ha ha. Uh, I guess you could do it again, oh. huh? And it's just like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what the hell? Man, reverse those genders. That's I don't just... even think that's worth saying, is it? It's so crazy as a double standard. Like, whoa. And the comments are like, it's not just what Harvey Weinstein was doing. Obviously, it's lesser as, as impact. But the whole, like, don't say shit, okay? And I can do this because I have the power and money in this circumstance. It's like, damn. Jeez. Um, yeah, and there's just those people being like, more people should see that interview. She just did that. Says and... it out loud in front of everyone. And, the, and that's another reason, apparently, why the Me Too joke in the show is getting more heat as well. Cause it's like, that's... Oh, because of that interview. You're right. Because when we saw that joke, I was confused what the joke was trying to say. I didn't, I didn't get what the point of the joke was. Yeah, well, the, huh. there's a couple ways you can interpret it, like I said, but even even still, like, she, like, brags about it, because he's, like, super hot, and it's just like, what the? I don't know, man. Yeah, it's just really not good. And people have said, like, the actor was probably just like, I can't do anything about this, like, because I, like, what would it mean for my career to make waves about this? I, just, I best just get on with my shit, I guess, you know? And then we get Velma. <laughs> like, and then Velma happens. I don't know, man. It's not often that I disagree with Drinker, but I hated Prey. It was hardcore with the message, but as grown men, we can disagree and still be friends. Um, I don't think it was hardcore with the message. Yeah, like, if... Uh, I just think it has loads of writing flaws that are much more conventional for a story, and... The, the the message for me wasn't it wasn't to do with men versus women it was just this weird like you want to prove that you can do a thing which is irrelevant of men and women um and then like your whole family gets killed as a result of your like ambitions and that like is a good result by the end really weird and you could probably at least uh, soften that by having her you know explain that like she never would have gotten to where she was if not for the people who helped teach her and helped save her and worked with her and that we lost a lot of them across this crazy adventure but no she just like doesn't she have the head of the predator and she's just like yeah uh yeah she just brings it back chucks it to him on the floor and then the fucking credits have the predators show up and I assume kill them all <laughs> it's just, it's like, i can only assume that's what sure happens because that's what they would do at that point, I have no idea what the the I like what they're trying to tell me exactly. Um, but yeah, lots of tweaks needed. Um, I watched three first time Predator eighty seven reactions yesterday. The original so amazing. Arnold compared to Mulan, it's just not believable. Um, oh, if you mean like she's too uh. Sort of like her build is nowhere near enough to do what she does in that film. I, I agree with that. There's plenty of things she does that are like, what the fuck? She's well, especially just against too the good. Predator. Predator's super duper strong. Yeah. Even when she's fighting the Frenchman in the scene, it's like, that's just, I just don't believe you. How is she this good? Yeah. When they have her take out like all the French dudes in a 1v5 or whatever, it's like, eh. Yeah, I just don't believe it. How long until they bring Arnold back as a senior military expert that fought a predator years ago and is now helping a novice military crew or group of people kill one? I'm surprised we never got that. I, I don't know if it's because he didn't want to do it. Because that just seems like the obvious thing they would do. They even brought in, um... Do you, remember, you guys remember Keys and Predator 2? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. he, his, um, his real-life son plays his... You know, in in the stories, his son in the Predator, he's in it. Oh, like, so there you go. They're, okay. they're still trying to bank on that keys nostalgia. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> good luck with that. The movie is well paced, but people are too used to constant flashy simulation stimulation from modern movies. Not that long of a film, is it? 
I remember it now. didn't seem long. I can't recall though. I could check. Um, Prey 2022. Like an hour and a half. So it's an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Fairly short, honestly. But, but of uh, course, well, length and pacing are two very different things. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you guys think of her big hunting mistake being retconned? I feel like she needed more flaws to balance her out. The oh fuck, I can't remember what was her big hunting big mistake? hunting mistake. Was that the tiger in the tree? Or the mountain? What was lion? the mistake? Was it that she uh... didn't kill it or fell or? The thing I remember about that scene is that she just survives. Uh... Amazing. Yeah, it is. It is amazing. Uh, also, can you say hello to my girlfriend Sandy? We both love your content. Well, hello, girlfriend Hi, Sandy. Sandy. Hello, Sandy. Are Wings you a squirrel who lives underneath the ocean. I ah, yes. Do you have? Well, never mind. Wings quote of the day: Mods, do your fucking jobs. He has uh, mods. Please. Yeah, I can imagine someone would want to be his mod because it would be funny. Yeah, it would be funny. It well, would I think be funny, sometimes yeah. people have ended up being banned like his mods because he believes that they're like infiltrating his, you know, like they're there to just make fun of him or like help people get in. Like there'll be times when he's playing Rainbow Six Siege and then like somebody gets added in and then he's trying to figure out, you know, like who added him in or, or like, you know, banning that person from like playing with him again because they added somebody in who was a troll. It's just his god is up. Uh, cats kill prey first. Oh, sorry. Cats kill prey first. Wolves and bears just start eating. Oh. Oh, what are you talking about, like, in general, I guess? Yeah, I can't remember if this came up for some reason, but... Yeah. That sounds unpleasant. Um, yeah. I guess you'd prefer to be killed before being eaten. Uh, also, uh, someone said, I can't believe this hasn't been suggested yet, but can you guys check out the Nanimon, I believe is a Digimon. What the fuck? What, what is that? Bad what idea. Yeah, that was a bad idea. What the hell? What is like... this? It's too much like a person. I keep thinking about, like, how his body functions. Yeah. Kind of like Modoc. <laughs> He does look like Modoc, yeah. Not a Digiman. That's like that's a Murdoch, person. That's a real Murdoch person with a film. terrible, terrible in the affliction. Legitimately, might look worse. It looks so bad, man. It do. That whole film looks so fake. Like, I mean, I know the Spy Kids like three D references are like pretty plentiful, but I mean, dude. <laughs> Um, a dead target is easier to drag home than a semi-alive one. Again, I can't quite remember what this is uh, related to. Mm. I just assume in general, I I think I would uh, pa I would potentially agree. Depends on if they're resisting you or not. Yes. As the movies in the Predator series. Uh, progresses. Predator looks more and more big and monstrous. I prefer the original simple Predator design. I'm more so just happy that there's just different versions. I'm, I'm, I love the idea that there's a more tech-focused uh, Predator who's maybe more slender, faster, and uh, you know, very susceptible to any kind of hit. Yeah. Um, like, they develop their own strategies based on, you know, their build. It's like, well, I'm not as strong as that guy, so I need to be a little bit more clever. Yeah, I'd be interested in, like, a, a hulking one as well, or, you know, something in between. Yeah. Whatever you want, a tech uh, more familiar Not one. that crazy one from the Predator, though. No thanks. No. Super duper one. True story? Probably story. Cougar, cat, kidnaps guy to have... I think this is sex with him? Damn. Nah. I mean, maybe one time in all of planet Earth, I don't know. Uh, what's up, my Ewoks? First of a super chat here. You guys have saved my sanity on many a long night of work. Also, hello there, good Sir Ragsington. 
Hello. Well, yeah, good to hear. Well, glad that you enjoy it, yeah. Uh, predator versus Predator Predquium. Predquium. <laughs> the Prevelation. The brilliant oh, yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a potentially better scene would be that Parker explained the dangers earlier and despite belittling her, protects her and she has to deal with the guilt. I think making her responsible for his death through her own, like, ambition, and then she defeats the Predator through a much better, more satisfying way than we saw, to then regret everything she did and realize that, like, you know, the pursuit of just trying to be better and prove yourself is, is insufficient for a meaningful life. Message um, should be about really playing to your strengths, I feel, because that's a good message to give to people, not just for combat against aliens purposes. Yeah. But, you know, you have talents, you know, work on your talents, hone your talents, be good at those. Don't You don't have to be good at everything. You don't have to be good at other things. You can bring, you know, you can bring something to the table because you are unique. And you can do, maybe you can do things other people can't do. You can think outside of the box. But I don't know if the film was really trying to go for that. Maybe it was a little bit, but it just turned into generic fight at the end. It was, It didn't really play up any sort of cleverness angle, though I... I think it tried to with the traps and the mud, but it just didn't. Right it just there, wasn't. Yeah, the execution right. was really bad. Agreed. Bang the predator slowly. All right. Ooh, ooh. I want to see this predator drink an autism smoothie. More like they inject it into their spine. Okay, you're making it sound silly. Jeb the predator bush versus predator the Buffy Slayer. Jeb the Predator Bush. I don't think anyone could stop Jeb if he was a predator. Yeah, give him the plasma caster and a bunch of the armor and stuff. He's gonna be unstoppable. I guess. Maybe she used the tomahawk to murder a successful hunter and steal all of his rabbits. Interesting, maybe. Oh, that, it's because we said, like, her doing that to the tomahawk does not, like, necessarily... It mean it doesn't mean that she's any more accurate. It just meant that she could recover the tomahawk faster, and then they like show have... that she's got a shit ton of uh, rabbits. But it's like, oh, this explains it. She could have just killed someone and stolen their rabbits now. Yeah, the the rope explanation doesn't make much sense. The only advantage that it would give you is if you have to. Let's assume that you could just yank it back and catch it. Let let's grant you that you can do that, which is a big grant. But let let's do it. All right. What it allows you to do is to throw more or throw the tomahawk more at a target that is within the range of that rope. So you'd have to throw it at a target in range of the rope, and then you'd have to retrieve it and then throw it again at the target, which has not left the range of the rope by that point, which a rabbit would have. Rabbits, rabbits are be fast. Rabbits are extremely skittish and they're super fast. Um, the origin of the high rags meme was in EFAP 17. Also, is your spaghetti sacrificial? Yes. No. Oh, I see we're different on that. I don't, I think spaghetti is like the lowest tier of pasta. Okay. I don't really have much of an opinion on ranking pasta. I'm just, I'm just fine with a lot of it. I love me. Um... I don't even know what my favorite would be. I like all kinds of pasta. Um, I love all sorts, but never been a fan of spaghetti. Oh, well, fam. Um, we get a post every once in a while on the subreddit that's like, "What is? Why is everyone saying high rags?" <gasps> Another because newbie. you're greeting uh, you're greeting the resident uh, doggo of the podcast. It's True. it is it is customary. It's like rubbing uh, a Buddha's belly for good luck. Yeah. Or the Wall Street Bulls testicles. You just do it. Muller is a massive and metal is here, I guess. Aw. Thanks so much. ER just uploaded another video. That. I wonder what video that was. That could be the, um... The one on... That would have been, nope. uh, maybe... Yeah. That could line up, right? Might do. I'm not gonna maybe. check, though. Did you know the reason the alien tale is in Predator is originally the film was supposed to end with Predator Killer being Ellen Ripley? 
The reason the alien tail is in the Predator. Well, but... If you're talking about the alien tail spear, that's just taken from AVP as a reference. I don't know that it means... I know that uh, they did toy with the idea of having Ripley in the big reveal at the end, but they also did for uh, Arnie. And um, I think they toyed with having an alien in there as well. The idea being that the Predator Killer is an alien. But then they went with that... I don't know if you guys remember this. They went with like the Iron Man Predator suit. Yeah, Iron Man suit. It was fucking cringe. And then cringe. that was abandoned because they never made another film. Thank they didn't make enough God. Money for God. Yeah. I know an old predator who swallowed a snake to swallow the rat to swallow the ant. I don't know why he swallowed the ant. Perhaps he'll die. Is that a reference to something? I don't get that one. What? The ant? Like the little... Little thing that scene that we didn't like? We have oh, the ant when he's killing everything? Right, yeah. yeah. That was yeah, silly. That was <laughs> uh, thoughts on Jojo Rabbit? I um, really like really it. Quiet. It's really good. Yeah. I would highly recommend it. Call it brilliant. I really liked it. Where did that Taika go? Yeah. And will he ever come back? <laughs> uh, thoughts on Jojo Predator? I don't think they made that yet. But we'll let you know when it comes out. Lord Longbong of Mewbushington Abbey, is there any good chance of a Kong fab of Peter Jackson's Long Kong? When there's less going on, it'd be a movie fab for the ages. P.S. Hello, Wagsies. Scritches for the good boy. Oh, hello. It has been mentioned before that we cover Peter Jackson's Long Kong. And we have covered King of the Monsters. That was one of the earlier EFAP movies. So it's like, you know, same series, kind of. With jig, big monsters. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I could see that happening at some point for sure, yeah. Hey, Moobler, did you see that the Alone in the Dark reboot is being written by the guy who wrote Amnesia and Soma? I'm glad he hasn't gone for good. Right. Well, yeah, he um he lent his talents to what? Need for Speed or something? It was a car game at one point, right? You know, something like that. Which is just like, that probably was one Not of the best written car games ever. <laughs> yes, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but uh, yeah, family. It, it'll be curious to check out. Um... At the end of Gladiator, the Roman Republic is refounded. This is as ridiculous to me as a cat jumping 15 meters is to you. Is a... Well, a cat can probably jump 15 meters if it runs and jumps. Um... I mean, 50 meters upwards? Oh, do you mean like it can m move from a spot uh, 15 meters and survive? I, I think I think cats cat, can cats drop fifteen meters and survive. As far as I know, cats can drop really far. If you're gonna like, if you wanted to kill a cat by dropping it, then you want to make sure to. I this was this was, this was a question on um, QI that that British show that I like. Mm -hmm. Um, where there, there's you don't want to throw it from the highest because it'll be able to like adjust itself and land. But you don't want to throw it from too short, or else the force won't be enough to kill it. You want to you want to get somewhere in the middle. So that the cat can't, like, get in the right spot or anything to land. So, I, I think it depends. But like a squirrel, you cannot kill a squirrel by dropping it. Because its terminal velocity is not going to be strong enough to kill it. So that's right, a, like so if you're in there. The, so the air resistance will slow it down enough. Yeah, squirrels can't die from falling. And I have seen, I have seen squirrels fall out of trees. It does happen. You might think that they are perfectly accurate jumpers and climbers and you would have that impression watch you watching them just casually but i've been in the woods enough here in arkansas and all over the place i have seen squirrels fall out of trees in the woods it was hilarious because he fell from the top of this big ass tree hit the ground dunk and then just runs right back up the tree doesn't miss a beat. He falls, hits the ground, instantly runs right back up the tree. It was hilarious. Well, have you ever seen a cow run? No, I don't I think don't so. Know that. Yeah, I saw a cow run once. It is stuck with me to this day. This I was scary. traveling <laughs> west to uh, traveling west to the Philmont Scout Reservation, where we spent a lot of time hiking. And on our trip west, we saw a large cow pasture. And in that cow pasture, there was a cow, and the cow was running. It's the only time I've seen a cow run, I think, in real life. 
it stuck with me. That was many years ago, but I will not forget the time I saw a cow run. And then me and my friends, we always remember. Do you remember that time we saw a cow and it ran? We would ask each other. And the answer would always be in the affirmative. Yes, I do remember. What a time that was where we saw that cow and it ran. Let's hope a cow never runs at you. Yeah, a cow can run to me, but not at me. Mm. Like a, a dog, you want a dog to run to you. You don't want to... So it, it's, like, it's like a lot of things. Like, throw the, throw the frisbee to me. Throw the ball to me. Don't throw the frisbee at me or the ball at me like I'm a target. That needs to be struck. Fifty Shades of Prey. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Quite a jokester. Um, show Wreck, Jurassic Park spinoff, Camp Crustaceous on Netflix. Characters are the focus. My favorite is Yasmina, only piece of the franchise that honors the original JP. I could believe that. Camp Crustaceous? I could believe some random animated thing that's a part of the IP that no one watched is much more respectful to Jurassic Park than any of the fucking the sequel trilogy. I can call it that. Yep, I can believe it 100%. Ugh. Uh, I urge you to give it a chance. Seasons 3 through 5 are fantastic. A breath of fresh, a breath of fresh air. Man, how did I get That's five right. seasons and I've like, not heard of it? Never heard of it. Okay, well, yeah, there you go. Wild. Um, would you grind up the flower for status effects? Cold arrows, cold, cold axe? Grind up the flower for status effects. Do you mean like... Oh, the flower, the, uh, the Tootsie. The orange Tootsie flower yeah. from Prey. Like you could grind it and put it on your weapons, and it's you know it's like a like when you're playing D and D or something. You could put poison. I was or gonna something say your um your ammo and your axe. Uh, sorry, your arrows and your axe are already cold, right? What do you mean cold? That's what they said. Yeah. Well, I, I think I mean, would you apply this to the weapons to give them like cold powers or apply cold damage? Like a cold oh. status effect, like a poison. Well, if it, it was just a makes game, it feel really probably. cold. I don't know. Yeah, if I was going to make a prey game, then yeah, why not? I feel like a prey game would be difficult to make. How to make? How do you make a game based off of that premise and like the movie? It could be tough. Um, I guess you start out with like low level hunter gatherer missions. Make it a um, I'd probably make it linear. I don't know. Pretty much just tell the story again, but make it better and gradually build up the missions. Have you know, like you can make the the bear thing like a mission where you have to keep finding ways to avoid its attacks until predator ends up. Yeah, like a lot of those video game movie or, or, or those movie video games were done. This is this part of the movie. Do this. This is this part of the movie. Do this. And it's all like just kind of different, pretty much. It's almost like a long sequence of mini games. Um, guess this doesn't bear repeating. <laughs> oh, you! Y'all are so funny today. The bear yeah, puns are quite polarizing, and some folks can get rather grisly over it. But I don't think it's a black wow. mark against the conversation. It's simply bear comedy. Also, hi rags. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, look at you go. I like the polarizing one. Is Wallace and Gromit a metaphor for the struggles of a great inventive mind whose deep addiction reduces him to an infantile behavior? Hi, Rex. Hello. I don't think so. I don't. What? What's his? What's his behavior that's infantile? I mean, he's he's, he's just like super wholesome and friendly, and he comes across as like an old dude, like just just trying to have know. some fun with life. I don't it's think like an it's old infantile. inventor man. Yeah, he's quirky. It doesn't have to be. That he's an uh, infant. Gosh. I should watch some Wallace and Gromit. I wouldn't mind watching Curse of the Were-Rabbit again. Oh, yeah, Wallace and Gromit is, man. C yeah, C Curse of the Were-Rabbit is, uh, that, that film's really great. Um... Muller is a cat now. Rags is a dog. Fringy is a frog. Jay is a rhino. What is Mootle's true form? Oh, what would Mootle be? What do I see? What would I see him as? Are there animals that know, regularly thinking... cry? 
kind of sad, but <laughs> yeah. what if he was like a I'm thinking of his face. What would he be? What what would he be? I mean, his face is modeled. The avatar is modeled after Pepe, so it's a frog as well. Might be a frog, yeah. But I don't know. The bushy beard makes me think like he's too mammal-like. You know, he's too fluffy. Hmm. Maybe kind of like combination. a combination. He'd make a. Do you think he'd be like be like a sad bear? I think he could be a sad bear. Yeah. Or cheer up the cuddly bear. Gonna be mean. Wants to watch some good TV, that's all. Uh, neat animals solifuge. They chase your shadow. Uh, An actual animal or a Pokemon? It sounds like it's probably a Pokemon. Solifuge, solifuge. You have a little look-see what comes up. I mean, animals that chase your shadow, that's something that's probably something that happens. Oh, it's a real thing. Solifuge is an order of animals in the class Arach Arachnida, uh, known variously as camel spiders, wind scorpions, sun spiders, or solifugues. Okay. Well, good for them. Uh, wait, this is 1719, but the Comanche have words for gun. I think they had they encountered the French before, something like that. I think they had, yeah. I guess you only need one encounter to have some word to point to whatever they have. Well, I just have someone say we should probably come up with a word <laughs> that we could use to describe whatever that is. <clears throat> Man, it must be so unreal to see a gun for the first time in your like whole life of not having anything like that. Oh yeah. Wow. Gee, that was... that. I've heard it like said Kung that Kung Fu Panda too, you know? Like, oh, look at that. That's <clears> like a crazy weapon that can defeat Kung Fu, you know? Scary. And Pocahontas uh, was speaking English when she met the Europeans. Because they were just, they had met before. You know, Europeans had been over before. So that's what she spoke. Uh, Evil Fi Trader Joe's has a real tasty strawberry cider. Hmm. Wait. River Trader Joe's. Now you know. Doesn't Tob's speech while tied to the tree kind of contradict his talk with her at the post-tiger hunt party? Like, how can he simultaneously think she doesn't have what it takes, but also doesn't? Uh, they're, they're in the thick of it. He needs to try and build up her confidence. Yeah, that's the they got that's like their one chance to escape, and they've got a whole group of people that would easily kill them, and then a huge alien monster person that's trying to kill them as well. Um, you'll try and say whatever works. Would you watch an animated adaptation of Batman versus the Predator? Like, yeah, I guess it was a little. Yeah, if it was good. Yeah, like that's that's the obvious lame answer I've got for you. It's just like, well, of course, if it were good, yeah. But if it, I imagine. It would probably have to be a little cringe, uh, more often than not, from all the different people making something like that. Because it's just like, yeah, and then Batman punched the Predator, and you went, ah, oh, yeah, gee. it was really fucking cool. Um, you should check out Sean Chandler's Star Trek Four review. He went into detail. One minute, how he thought Jason deserved a more and slow, gruesome death. Hi, Rags. Oh wait, is it hello. We'll be ST Four. Stranger Things Four. Ah, uh, Stranger Things 4. Because he had Jason. Remember Jason, uh... Uh, Fringy? Wait, what? Sorry? Stranger Things. Um, oh. Oh, the, the guy who got, like, melted his chest. Yeah. And how people, like, thought that that was great when it's, when the, the fact of the matter was that, like, he had been... He had only received a small portion of information that was insane. Yeah. Rags would have fucking hated that part. <laughs> it's, uh... well, it's just weird. It almost feels like this, like, haha, I got him. It's like, what, got this guy who's for the last, what, couple of weeks has been bombarded with bad news and these insane pieces of information that he has no means of reconciling. Yeah, no, it, it felt really fucking juvenile to be like, Jason's a horrible monster and I wish he has all the suffering. Now he's, yeah, now he's, now he's gone, bye-bye. And everyone's happy now, yeah. 
I might have had one more drink than I ought to have, but I don't think you have to evil die the French. They're French. That's enough to redshirt them. I mean, a lot of people right. came away from the film saying that they wish the French were a little more, um, I don't a know. A little bit less cartoonish? Or just one note. And yeah. one stinky note, you know? Hmm. Um, Trader Joe's has a... Oh, wait, that was a cider one, yeah. Uh, hi, guys, look up the moon. Ultra Sun and Moon Dex entry for Mega Kangas Khan. Also, look up the Ultra Sun of Parasect. I remember when you guys were sending away more of these, and we eventually had to ask you to stop. <laughs> because uh, pick, pick one. We'll, we'll look up one. I was about to say, that's four, so I don't know. What are we supposed to... Which one do you want to go with? Which name sounds... Oh, well, wait, Parasect, I know. That's one of the... Ker Kangaskhan, I know. So yeah. both of these... Parasect is the, the insect one. Uh, so let's do let's that. Let's take a look at that one. Okay. Very like that stuff. Pokemon DB. Ultra Sun. The bug is mostly dead, with the mushroom on its back having become the main body. If the mushroom comes off, the bug stops moving. So, it's Cordyceps. Creepy. But a Pokemon. <laughs> Creepy. Maybe. But like, as it evolves, the bug dies and the mushroom takes over? Yeah, I mean, uh, for some reason, I feel like I've known that for ages. Like, the, the, we've all known that. The, the creepy Maybe. thing about Paris to Parasect. Maybe it's just one of those things I've forgotten. I think it's one of those, like, um, you see the images and then someone points out that reality and you're like, oh, no. And it's like, yeah. Uh, is it better that the Predator home planet and culture remain somewhat ambiguous or is it something you'd like to see if done properly? Again, absolutely. The, I'm not someone who is on the side of, like, mystery is better. I'm like, I think it's always going to be if you execute it well, but it's really complicated sometimes. Like, yeah, let's exactly. visit the Predator home world. It's like, right. oof. That's not the second you I think it's just show scary. Predator Homewood, you put so much in stone that wasn't in stone, and so now you gotta be very careful. Because you can it's make stuff real cool. Really really good answers. You need good answers to the questions that people have. Really and good if ones, you provide yeah. them with unsatisfactory answers, then yeah, you're screwed. Because I'm already picturing like you know, he lands and walks through like a street of the Predator world and there's like Predator mums and dads going out shopping and Predator babies just like, what? and he's just like, I don't think, I don't you can't In the be... cart, you know, we have to go get some eggs before dad's home <laughs> from work so that we could get him a, you know, make something nice for him because he works hard for us. It's, it's just really wholesome, you know? And, and yeah, it's like, if you want to make that decision, because like when you don't show it, everyone gets to imagine whatever they want. It's not even mystery, it's just that uh, it's a constantly changing view in your own head that can match whatever you prefer. And every time you don't like a thing you you come up with yourself, you can just wipe it. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I don't know. I I like the idea, but then I'm like, actually, ooh, that's going to go horrible, isn't it? It's just, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think I want to... We don't have to give it a try, you know, we can, we can just... <laughs> Stay nice and cozy in that realm of, yeah, who knows. At the same time, it's like, oh, so it's just reserved to just being this slasher thing where the guy runs around, kills people and stuff. It's like, I'm all for evolving Maybe. Predator, I just don't know that. Be careful. That's all. Mm. Is it implied that the elder Predator from Predator 2 kills Naru and takes the pistol as a trophy? Possibly, yeah. I, I, I find that ending credit sequence very baffling that they put it in there. It's just like, the Predators land and fuck everything up. It's like, oh. Okay. Right. Okay then. Um, Apocalmon. Check out the original edgy Digimon. So many of these, <laughs> but I am a little it tempted by the name. Apocalypse. Apocalmon. That's terrible. Ah. Oh. How edgy is he? It's, it's, I would say it's almost exactly what we may have expected in some format. You, you have a couple of examples of how something can be super edgy, but look at that fucking thing. Oh, uh, fuck? wow. It looks like a just like wow. a landmine. Is that his head sticking out of the top? I don't know. That's so I almost lame. want Apocalmon to be this like chubby rabbit just waving his hand. Yeah. Nice subversion, and, and then the whole time you're like, so what does it do? Is it like some crazy monster? It's like, yeah, wouldn't you like to know? 
And then you just have to sit Yeah, there like, and... Apocalmon's greatest power is still unknown to the world because everybody within a witnessing... Yeah. Oh, you know, it's like... like that guy, remember when Homo got the Mafia and the Yakuza were fighting in the Simpsons and there was just that quiet guy standing there? Yeah. And it's like, he's gonna do something cool! Closes the door. Hi-ya! <laughs> oh, we missed it. <laughs> when he gets punched through the window, forgive me, please, and then just jumps back out and gets into the fight. See, we were talking about how you can provide really good answers, but sometimes the mystery, you know what? Sometimes that is the best choice. I knew I'd get disappointed whatever uh, I was going to see for Apocalmon. Like, this isn't going to be yeah, fun. Yeah, of course. It's just so lame. Still, this movie is better than the Mustafa duel. Hmm. Man, I, I, didn't we conclude the I, Mustafa duel is like really like absurd in terms of how long it lasts yeah. and where it goes but like i'm pretty sure it's it's one of the higher rankers for fights isn't it i really like it i think as shad said like. choreography wise it's one of the best ones it probably is i wouldn't be surprised a lot of work went into it so yeah, i'd have to check up on that but i remember thinking no and 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 you can fix the dialogue of that sequence by uh putting on the a uh, different subtitled language and then making up your own subtitles as in like dubbing it with a made-up language and then you changing. turn her against me see you change that you, you wouldn't have that you, you do something else you wouldn't have that correct you would not uh you would not have that. i just don't get what the orange flower is supposed to do cold increases blood pressure which is absolutely not what you'd want for bleeding people i don't i, I don't think it was it was going to make sense to really think about it is it the idea that the colder the blood is, the more viscous it is? Wait, are, do things flow better the more or less viscous they are? I need to check. I think I've forgotten. What makes blood Viscous coagulate constant. faster, colder or hotter? I, it would probably... I, I, let me see. Uh, so, viscosity is a state of being thick. So the more viscous it is, the thicker it is. Right. Um, yeah, so honey has a high viscosity, but like water would have a low viscosity. Um, so as for blood, does blood clot uh, temperature? Blood clot temperature. Um, the thrombin generator, uh, the thrombin generation, which is sounds like one of our made up Wombo words. The thrombin generation is recalcified human plasma clotting at twenty C. That's da da da. The the temperature does not necessarily... Ah, does temperature reflect blood clotting? All right. Um, da, 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 da. This type of stress has to... How cold was... Carry on and I'll look it up. Hey, Mube, love you a bunch. I miss your Twitch highlight vids. Will you consider a John Wick EFAP? Maybe on the fourth movie. Depends on what it is. Um, as for anything more than that, I don't think so. I've got no plans for anything for John Wick. Also, Lost Man. was too rage by chance still being worked on. No guarantees. But yeah, John Wick 4 is on the way out, and, and many people are excited for it while we're just like, mm. <laughs> John mm. Wick. Yeah, John Wick. The crazy things. It says uh, here that there are 53% more heart attacks in winter, and the highest cold induced cardiovascular risk risk exists just hours or days after exposure to cold so it says that it's not linked to temperature itself but rather the change from warmer to colder temperatures sudden changes in temperature causes thermal stress for the body which has to work harder to maintain its constant temperature this type of stress has a profound direct effect on the viscosity of your blood making it thicker more stickly stickly sticky and more likely to clot so there's that but i don't know I have to do a lot more googling. I suppose so, more than I'm willing to. How does Naru know that the Frenchman being cold makes him invisible as opposed to playing dead? She just knows it's heat vision. Um, if she knows it's heat vision and then the, the predator can't see him, then she'd assume he's registering as cold? I think they already knew that the plant makes you cold as well, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I assume that's it. On the Predator's active camouflage, fairness, a lot of modern hunters use all sorts of deception and camouflage to their advantage for hunting. I can't remember, I think someone brought up, like, there's a common just conversation about whether or not it makes sense or is fair that he has the active camo. 
as a as a hunter archetype and right it depends yeah on who you're fighting um i think is where the question of fairness comes in like, like if you're if fighting a modern for, army if he went for a bunch thing. of cavemen that was like what he was battling and he had the camo i think it would be a fun detail that he doesn't use the camo at all he's like this is way uh, too yeah, unfair he, to these guys he so, puts yeah <laughs> This is like a big, and this is going to date the, uh, the, it's just news relating to, uh, to Microsoft. Can you not do it after? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figure that we can, because, yeah, it dates the video and it's a massive, <laughs> it's a massive pivot in terms of the conversation. Let's return to Prey. Yeah, I think, the, I think the, the idea of a predator who doesn't turn invisible, but just covers its, uh, covers his, his body in, like, Bushes and camouflage and body paint and things like that could be really interesting. Well, I certainly wouldn't want to use in the plasma caster against fucking cavemen, you know? Yeah, that would be ridiculous. And rewatching that film, like if you could put him in a whole bunch of scenes where he's there but hidden and like not even reveal it, you just notice on a rewatch maybe that he's in scenes, um, kind of like the, you know, the Hill House stuff, the, the spookies. Where they're just hanging out and you don't notice them until a rewatch. Uh, that would be kind of neat or nifty, where he's just sort of watching them and he's in the background. Uh, that could be cool without relying on just turning invisible. Yeah, because now I'm actually like, I'm thinking of the other direction. Maybe all he has is the invisibility in his fists. He reduces himself down to that. Maybe the the a knife or or uh, his wrist blades as well. He has to match the weapons that they use, perhaps. So he goes out there, sees what they use, and he makes his own versions of them to beat them be with cool. their own weapons. But hey, you know, make another fucking seven terrible ones or whatever first. We maybe get an okay one. Uh, hey, all you guys inspired me to make videos, and I wanted to thank you. Um, oh, excellent. Thanks. Also, do you have any tips for staying motivated? Oh. Tough one. Uh, I'm sure you'll Tips find a lot saying. of resources online that you can read about, or books and stuff that can give you a variety of different answers because there's no single good one. I It'll be yeah, very different for all kinds of people as well. Uh, I mean, that I try to return to is just make sure if you're re reviewing lots of shitty media that you keep refamiliarizing yourself with the good shit and why you love it and how much, uh, I don't know, the craft has differed between those examples and you know, you can always return to the things that motivate you in the first place or avoid that which is dumbing down your ability to enjoy engaging with it. But hey, something that I don't think many people say is like, if you've lost your motivation, maybe you should move on to something else. It doesn't yeah, necessarily maybe mean you, could do you something should force yourself to, to it until you get motivation back or anything. Could be a matter of pacing, or maybe you just don't really know how to create the thing you want like you have an abstract idea of what you want to do like oh i want to make youtube videos but i don't know like what i want them to be or look like and maybe you could get inspiration from watching what other people do and you know seeing how they do it and putting your own kind of you know uh personal element on them all kinds of stuff that can happen yeah uh i thought it was a neat touch that the predator's weapons were 300 years behind I mean, they were different. Like uh, the oh, he didn't have a plasma caster; he had a know. like dart launcher. I feel like that thing. was a choice that he like made. Was, the fact yeah. he has a spaceship, he has to have a plasma caster, surely. I would have thought he'd have one. And besides, well, whether or not he, you can you can read it, read it one of two ways: they haven't invented it yet, or that he chose not to have it because it was way too advanced for the people he's fighting. Mm. That's how I interpret that, and that's what I think is the best sort of interpretation and someone's personally. gonna say oh wow well that fucking device isn't exactly fair is it it's like well the thing about that one is that it's a it's like a better version of some of the things that they can use right like a bow and arrow fires a sharp bit of metal into you his version is much better in the same way that they have like a mini gun in predator or uh, several rifles of many kinds and then he has the plasma caster it's just like the thing about it is I don't think he's going to, like, a council of fair people to decide how fair his weaponry is. I think it's just he's kind of winging it as he gets there and decides what he wants to do. In the same way we might do it with a video game. I'd be like, oh, I wonder if I can do all of this without using uh, 
you know, any other weapon than the plasma cutter, for example, in Dead Space. It's like, uh, it doesn't have to be more than that because the predators are characters. Uh, that's another thing that people wonder if they'll ever do is have a predator that is like. I think AVP is the fucking closest you get to a predator having a character. I think kind so. Weird. Yeah, maybe. And, uh, you know, is there a way to do that right? And it's like, it must be, right? There must absolutely be a way to do that. Um, Naru made herself invisible with the plant. What is Predator aiming at if he can't see her? Uh, I'm trying to remember what scene you might be referring to, but obviously the stock answers could or be he that might... he's concentrating right. and just focusing on sounds, if there are any. Eyeballing. It could be eyeballing it, yeah. And when there's, like... Um, I think you even see this in the first one, but you, you can see, like, vague outlines of things, and you might be like, is that yeah. fucking... Is that it? Is it? Might as well give it a try. Uh, also, they never show how this Predator's vision works without the helmet in this one. Um, I guess you don't need to, That's alright, you don't need that. I think my favorite part of this stream, other than all the fabulous puns from Rags, is more fangirling mm. whenever the Predator does cool things. I really like seeing a predator be strong and fast and cool because they're really neat and uh, mm -hmm. appeals to me. That's why this movie simultaneously appeals to me and annoys me. Yep. To be fair, this predator has his ass kicked all movie to weaken him by the end, though it's not shown properly, such as how the predator in P2 is. I'm not sure what you mean exactly. Um, I think the Predator in Predator 2 makes some pretty retarded mistakes when he fights uh, different people. Oh, yeah, he does. Um, and that's not, again, not to say that, that happens in Prey as well. Uh, it's unfortunate because the Predator is a very OP individual, so some people struggle to figure out how to injure them. He won in Predator. He decided to fist fight Arnie, and it got him killed eventually. Yeah. That's much more satisfying than, you know, <laughs> he, I don't know, he, he fucking walks into a thing and... I was just saying, do you remember when he, he triggers his own mass and he, does, he seems to realize, but it doesn't move for like seconds, and you're just like, come on, man. You know what's happening, yeah. don't you? This is dark. I'm Mubelschleem, Fraggle, and German. Hi. Hi. Yay. Ray seems like a test to find people who see woke in places where it isn't to the point of making shit up about it. Also, hi, Raggles, and Dega Shadow the Hedgehog. Eh. Hello. Um... Like I said, we, we don't really break it down that way, but um, the scale of which something is infected by, uh, I don't know, agenda-driven writing, as someone might put it, is, is difficult to pin down sometimes for a lot of people, and I guess it always will be. Um, but that's not the debate we really have. Some other people might. That's happening right now with... Uh, well, the, I've already dated this by talking about Velma, but it's happening right now with The Last of Us. It's happening... It's actually uh, happening with yeah. Velma. Both sides are trying to say, like, this isn't ours. Exactly. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, exactly. Who's responsible for this? <laughs> you just pissed off everyone. Yeah. Where did you learn to hunt? On a farm? Yeah, she did. Uh, it's the world building reversal. Predators get their hands on the Earth pistol and develop their own plasma vision. I don't know about that. That sounds not right at all. I don't think it's hard for, to imagine. If they've come up with everything we've seen on him, and they've got the interstellar travel and that ship, why is the plasma caster not just... This is what I mean about technology trees. Like, imagine we had energy weapons, and that they could form projectiles and kill our enemies from a distance with incredibly powerful beams of light and stuff. It's like, no, we could have came up with that because we saw the humans had made, like, a flintlock pistol. It's like, no. Nah, <laughs> I, I don't believe you. Absurd. Uh, nah, this movie makes sense because Predators came to Earth in search of people with autism and found the ultimate autism in this chick. Oh, it's all coming together. It all makes sense. You didn't think they would, but they did. It's a masterpiece compared to The Predator? Agreed. But that's really not fair, oh, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's not fair. It does seem like it was this Predator's first time on Earth. Well, that would be fine. It's not fine to make it the first Predator on Earth, though. No, I think uh I don't think I'd ever answer that, that question. I just never would. Yeah, you'd never why yeah, would they... you ever pointlessly limit yourself by giving us that information? What does it why benefit you, you to do that? Like, oh cool, it's the first one. There you go, that's all your benefit gone. Well just yeah, because it means now you can't go earlier and there's so much human history before then. 
And it doesn't have to be human history, does it? It could be that they come in, come down dinosaur times and be like, hey, buddies. Yeah. I'll fuck you up. How you doing? Arcane Unbridled Praise, please. I'm pretty sure we had. Oh, they mean like a full video. I mean, the EFAP streams, man. Come on, that was like, that was like 30 hours or something. That's pretty, <laughs> the yeah, whole book. Three streams. Um. Sorry about last stream. I meant to put Braga. Okay, Friday Night Funkin' EFAP still has Easter eggs you guys missed. Please play it, Mola. Love you guys. Um, I did play it a little bit. It's just that... I don't know, I, uh, I'm trying to fit it in with... I would have to fit it in with everything else, and... We are actually hyper-backlogged on community content to go through. Trying to get the Super yeah. Chats done first, and then we'll, we'll do a meme fab after that. Um, but thank you very much. Maruika, or hello in Comanche EFAP. I set the bar low for this as I wanted it to show why my tribe was so feared to be the lords of the southern plains with the use of more horses and tactics used. Okay. Um, what's funny is that there was a comic that explains how the elder predator got the gun and even why he says take it. Yeah, I saw people talking about that. It's something to do with a pirate, I think. The story sounded interesting. Um, isn't there a Hollywood guideline that you can't have women being taught by men, etc? Uh, it might not be in all studios and stuff. Um, I don't know, but I've heard that that's a thing for Marvel, I think. Uh, there's a couple of other ones that are absolutely bizarre, but yeah. I like how the leprechaun has his gold stolen and they act like he's the bad guy. Is that the premise for that film? They steal his gold and he comes and kills them all? That sounds amazing. We will do the leprechaun at some point. That'll happen because I haven't seen any of them. And the last one, mm. Digimon of the day is Terriamon. You guys are obsessed it... with the Pokemon Digimon shit. Digimon Terriamon. Yeah, Terria. Isn't this is one of the more common ones? It's the thing with the big ears. I think I've seen that one before. I think I have too. Like, it's used in a lot of promotional stuff, I think. Okay. Um, the fingers are kind of creepy. Yeah, actually. I was going to say, the whole thing is cute, are... but the, the fingers are very... Yeah, they're, just... they're very... Yeah, uh, they're kind of mm. there, and they don't... They look scratchy. Lie. They do look scratchy, they look, yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> there we are, then. All right, um, then. Thank you all for joining us. This is the, the Prey catch-up. There's more catch-ups on the way that we will get to. Um, but for now, toodle pip cheerio. Yeah, bye everybody, bye. we will see you later. Bye. bye, bye, bye.